Welcome back to The Lead. Today's national lead, a pivotal Supreme Court case over immigration and the powers of the president. Outside, protesters on both sides staging demonstrations. Inside, we heard justices weigh in and perhaps signal which way they're leaning in oral arguments. CNN justice correspondent Pamela Brown joins me now. So, so Pam, the president thought that his policies would be the centerpiece of his second term, but now you have 26 states in total challenging him. That's right. And this really is a case that tests the boundaries of presidential powers. And inside that courtroom today, Jim, the justices seem closely divided on this immigration issue. And if it does end up being a 4-4 split following the death of Justice Antonin Scalia, that would be bad news for the president and millions of undocumented immigrants in the U.S. because the president's programs would remain blocked. No más deportaciones. No más deportaciones. No. The fiery debate over immigration played out on the steps of the Supreme Court with hundreds of protesters from all across the country. Inside, the justices listened to intense arguments over whether the president has the authority to not only shield more than four million undocumented immigrants from deportation, but also grant them the right to work and receive benefits like Social Security and Medicare. The eight justices appear divided along ideological lines. The conservative justices seem to side with Texas and the other 25 states suing the administration for executive overreach. Justice Anthony Kennedy said it's as if the president is setting the policy and the Congress is executing it. That's just upside down. It transforms unlawful conduct into lawful conduct. And I think if the executive, the president has the power to do that, I think that should trouble every American. The liberal justices seem sympathetic to the administration's arguments. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, noting there are 11 million undocumented immigrants already in the U.S., said inevitably priorities have to be set. Antonio Campos is one of the undocumented immigrants the president is trying to help. He came to the U.S. from Mexico illegally in 1995. He had two children here who are U.S. citizens and has spent many years as a community volunteer in Sacramento. When I came here, I came with uh, my own cloth, and that was it, and the, the hopes that I can bring a better life to my family. Because I'm a man of faith, I have the illusion that this is going to be a uh, beginning of a better society. If the administration loses this case, Campos and millions of other immigrants will remain in legal limbo. And it was clear from oral arguments that several justices grappled with the question of whether the states even had the legal grounds to bring this case forward. Texas said it would cost it millions of dollars to issue driver's licenses to the protected immigrants and claims that the state that that, that gives the state standing to sue. The administration disagreed, saying Texas doesn't have to subsidize these licenses. If the justices decide the states do not have the standing, Jim, then the president's programs would be able to go forward. So you have 4.3 million undocumented immigrants covered under this case. Mm -hmm. if, if the case is lost, if the president loses the case, do they get sent home? Well, not necessarily. So, so most of these 4.3 million undocumented immigrants are considered low priority targets. And so right now, DHS is really focused on high priority targets like criminals, people who recently crossed the border. And so most likely they would just remain in the status quo where they're in the United States while DHS focuses on those high priority targets.